if you're the father. If you're the mother, you probably still find it hard seeing the funny side of things. <laughs> oh, women. Uh, not all women. I, I mean the old-fashioned ones. You know, the old-fashioned women. Oh, God. You know, the ones with wombs. Oh. oh. <laughs> Those fucking dinosaurs. Oh. <laughs> Yo, 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 welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Big Dirty. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for asking me, you guys. All right, so I have a different comedian for us today. I know it's not William Burr. William Burr is struggling there. I was just like caught between calling him William and Bill. I didn't know the pressure was too much. Uh, <laughs> so here we have Ricky Gervais, my favorite British uh, comedian. How do you like my British accent? Uh, I can't be asked. I can't be bothered. I'm pretty, pretty much, pretty much fluent in that accent at this point. Um, I always want to say hello, mate, when I start speaking in a British accent, but I'm 99% sure that's uh, Australian, right? I could be wrong. 1%. The 1% could be British. So who really knows? No one actually knows these days. Okay, you guys, this is about him and something about Supernature. Ricky Gervais' Supernature is his new stand-up on Netflix. All right, enjoy. I played arenas around the world. Netflix bought it for a record amount. It was the most watched special of the year. I thought, everyone loves me now. Everyone loves me now. Then I got this tweet. <sighs> <laughs> Real tweet. I... Call yourself a comedian. He knows I do. <laughs> <laughs> Literally says the word in my Twitter bio. <laughs> yeah. If you're the father, if you're the mother, you probably still find it hard seeing the funny side of things. <laughs> oh, women. Uh, not all women. I, I mean the old-fashioned ones. You know, the old-fashioned women. Oh, God. You know, the ones with wombs. Oh. oh. <laughs> Those fucking dinosaurs. Oh. <laughs> No, I love the, the new women. I know the new women. They're great, aren't they? The, you know, the new ones we've been seeing lately. The, the ones with beards and cocks. They're as good as... Oh. They're as good as gold. I love them. <laughs> no, it's the old-fashioned... And now the old-fashioned... They're like, oh, they want to use our toilets. Why shouldn't they use your toilets? For ladies. They are ladies. Look at their pronouns. <laughs> what about this person that oh isn't my God. a lady? Well, his penis. <laughs> Her penis, you fucking bigot! <laughs> you bigots! <laughs> what if he rapes me? What if she rapes you? <laughs> you fucking turf whore! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. But that tweet sums comedy up, doesn't it? How subjective it is. How one person, some people can find him hilarious, some people find him the, the least funny person in the world. And when someone says to me about another comedian, they say, oh, they're not funny. Even if I agree with them, I stand up, I say, well, you can't say that. You've got to say, you don't find them funny, you know? And I hate it when people say, that joke was offensive. I gotta say, no, you've got to say, you found it offensive. Because it's all about feelings, and feelings are personal. Right. And there's loads of types of comedy, and comedy evolves, you know. There's a new type of comedy at the moment called woke comedy, right? <laughs> no, it's very progressive, you know. There are some clubs now where the comedian has to sign a thing saying he won't say anything contentious or he won't say anything that, that could offend anyone. It's a safe space Wait, what? for the audience. Woke comedy, and uh, what? I tried to hold watch on, it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, woke comedy? Oh, so basically it's a lecture? <laughs> <laughs> That's what woke comedy is. It's like you're being punished. It's a lecture. But it's a safe space for the audience. Woke comedy. And uh, I tried to watch a bit of it, and I decided I'd rather watch Louis C.K. masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> Can't mention him anymore. He's cancelled. Uh, oh, I love Louis. And move on. We've got a... Like, poor Kevin Hart. See, Kevin Hart, he got the job. Yeah. Hosting, you know, it, was, it was his best day ever. He was on Twitter going, oh, I've wanted to do this all my life, right? And then s someone found these 10-year-old tweets, right? That they were sort of childish, sort of shitty, homophobic tweets. It, it was about his son. He was mucking around. He said, oh, my son's doing so-and-so. I hope he's not gay. There was a massive backlash. He went, oh, sorry, that sound. I'm not homophobic. Really sorry. He right. deleted them, right? And said, I'm really sorry. Um, right. Ten years later... Someone finds a screen grab and goes, look, he's done this. Oh, big, uh, the Oscars go, oh, you've got to apologise again. He went, no, 
I've apologised. I can't keep apologising. And he's right. If there's no yeah. value to saying sorry yeah. and evolving, he yeah. might as well just tweet him again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how I deal with shit. Anyway. Honestly, like, what do they want him to do at that point? Like, he apologised. He said he was sorry. Like, are we just going to keep, like, punishing it over and over? Like, what else do you want him to do? What does he want him to do? Like, allow people to move on. I really like what Ricky is saying. I completely agree, like, with everything. Allow the, allow people to move on. Like, oh God, people just want to feel victimized, I swear. But if you're the type of person to revel in someone getting cancelled for something they said 10 years ago, you're just yeah. ensuring that one day you'll be cancelled for something you said today. You can't predict what will be offensive in the future. You don't know who the dominant mob will be. You know, like, the worst thing That's you can true. say today, get you cancelled on Twitter, death threats, whatever. the worst thing you can say today is, women don't have penises, right? <laughs> now, <laughs> no one saw that coming. <laughs> there are no 10-year-old yeah. tweets of people saying, there are, you won't find a 10-year-old tweet of someone saying, women don't have penises. <laughs> Do you know why? We didn't think we fucking had to. It's ridiculous. You guys, I really am a feminist. I really, really, really am. Like, I be believe in hardcore, like, foundational feminist, uh, you know, beliefs and views. Like, but this is out of hand. Like, when it goes against biology, that's just too much. Like, how are you going to say? Like, I, I just feel like it's it's getting so out of hand. Oh, he what happened to Liam Neeson? Didn't he? What? Liam Neeson. For what? Now, I don't know why he told this story, <laughs> but he did <laughs> at a press junket to a journalist, right? And it was where he just started saying, uh, it was 30 years ago, he said, and uh, my friend came home and um, she'd been raped. Right? And uh, that's what? not the funny bit. <laughs> <laughs> what did the guy look like? Uh, he said he was a black guy. He said, so I got my cosh and I went up looking for the first black guy. He said, nothing happened. I came to my senses, right? Ooh. But the weird thing about that story is, who has a cosh? <laughs> what is a cosh? I don't even know what that is. Is that an English term? A British term? It was touch and go. They canceled the premiere that night because of the backlash and that people wanted the film to be deleted. And I get it. Mm. Some people can't separate the art form with the artist's personal life. Now, I know Liam, yeah. I've worked with him. He's a lovely man. He's definitely not racist, but when that broke, even I was like, oh, will I ever be able to find Schindler's List funny again? <laughs> I, d I, I do still find it funny, obviously. <laughs> but now there's so much outrage, and we hear about it, and it's yeah. taken seriously, you know? There's uh, Oxbridge comedians writing for the posh papers, telling you the rules of comedy. They're laying it down, yeah. laying down the law, right? And yeah. some stuff like, um, Comedy should punch up. You should never punch down. You should never punch down. Sometimes you've got to punch down. <laughs> like, if you're beating up a disabled toddler. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you punch up, you'll miss the little cunt and he'll win, you know? I like that joke, because it highlights the difference between metaphorical punching down in jokes <laughs> and actual punching down. But people nowadays want you to believe that words are actual violence, right? Now, you laughed at a joke about beating up a disabled toddler. No one got hurt. If I'd have actually dragged out a disabled toddler <laughs> and started beating him up, you would laugh, right? <laughs> That's why I dropped that bit. Um... Oh my God. Oh, so funny. Crazy, crazy topics. He's absolutely right. Outrage, cancel culture, all of it. It's so, it's getting so out of hand. Woke comedy? I didn't even know that was a thing. It's getting ridiculous you guys like it's getting ridiculous the whole point of comedy is so that you can make fun of things when i was traveling ugh. when i was traveling i met someone who told me that making fun of like a certain comedy that makes fun of stuff like this is so offensive because what if everyone in the room thinks it's funny but that one there's one person in the room that's offended because you don't know what they went through in life then one part of that one person i'm sorry needs to have thick skin because I'm sure he, everyone goes through something, but the things that I went through, I laugh at. I, on, I make jokes about, you know, everyone's been through some sort of trauma or whatever, or abuse or, you know, I hope they haven't, but, and it varies in degrees, but you know, 
it's just part of life. What are you going to do? Just sit around and hope no one brings it up or you don't ever, you're not ever exposed to it again. Like, or you could try to take control of your life a little bit, try to make it funny so that you can cope with it better and deal with it. And honestly, in a way, be able to overcome some of that. I think it helps. I think it's healing. I really do. I think a lot of comedians make jokes about the things that they went through or the pain that they've been in because it's healing. It is. It doesn't make it so serious, although it always will be. In a sense, it's just nice to be able to like laugh at things and look at it at a different lens instead of always being so like, oh, this is awful. This is so bad. Like, yeah, we know it's bad. That's why people are making jokes about it. And I don't know. It's just like, I feel like we're just so feeding into this culture of like tiptoeing and being afraid of everything. It's just getting so out of hand. And as a feminist, I think that we should work towards comedy. Comedy is great. I love it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Let me know what you think about this. If you want me to react to the entire stand up, be sure to leave a comment down below and come through to my other links and ways to support me are all down below in the comment section. Oh, sorry, in the description box uh, above the comment section. Oh my God, it's like giving directions like MapQuest all over again. I am too young to know what MapQuest is. <laughs> all right, you guys. And on that note, I'll catch you next time. Bye.